I want to talk to you about textiles, Navajo weavings, and the things that I look for. There's some very important things you want to look for in a weaving when it comes to damage. And there's all sorts of kinds of damage I've seen from my entire life at looking at these things. And here are some of the big ones. One, if it has like we call a dog ear or something where the ends of the corners have been actually eaten and ripped apart by a dog. It's very common actually if you have a puppy that they may damage a rug. These things usually can be fixed but you need to take it in consideration. If it gets involved into a pattern of the weaving itself, it gets more expensive than if it's just one of the edges and it's all, let's say, a brown color or a single color or just a few colors. That makes a big difference. Urine. Well, if you got dogs, you're probably going to have urine. And what you want to look for are these yellow stains. Now, not all urine can be removed, so it's important to know if you have a textile and have a weaving that has urine in it, it may really affect the value. And you don't really know if that can be removed professionally until it's done. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't come out. And even the guys that do the restoration and the cleaning can't tell you for sure what's going to go on because they just don't know until they try it. Three, look at the selvage. The selvage is the area that's around the weaving. And it's very important that you want to have most of this intact because it's a very expensive to have fixed if it isn't. So look and see if it has the loops are there and the selvage cords are there. If not, this could be a problem. And sometimes, like in the example I'm showing you now, you'll see things that are bound. Somebody, and we call these old lady repairs, they put a binding on the ends because something went on, right? Usually it means that it was used on the floor, got worn out, and they didn't want it to fall apart or they were concerned and they just bound the ends. But you really don't know what's underneath that bounding unless you take it off. So you, if you're going to buy it, you better pay for it like that. Otherwise, you need to take off the binding so you can see what you have. Another big issue that's always a problem is fading. So not all weavings will fade, but some will fade, and some will fade more than others, especially German towns have a tendency, because they're commercial yarn using commercial synthetic dyes, to fade. So you always want to look at both sides. And it's not even a bad idea just to take the weaving and to kind of open up the wefts and look inside, because you can see, you might see an area like, oh, this is a gray, kind of gray color. No. It's actually blue or purple, but it's faded to this gray color. So open up the, the uh, sides of the weft and look inside, peer inside. If it's faded badly on one side and not the other, we call this an AB. Those rugs and textiles aren't worth as much. I usually value them about as half the value, especially if it's really bad. The other thing is moth damage. Moths occur, and sometimes you can fix it. Sometimes it's a real problem because they kind of graze on the surface of the wool. And if they grazing on it, this is very difficult to fix. You have to take all that out. So it's important to look and see. Color runs. Another big one that I see on a regular basis is that it got wet and the color has run into different parts of the weaving. Sometimes this can come out. It's expensive, but it can be taken out. But sometimes if it's a black or what we call blue bleed, that may not come out at all. So you better be very careful if you're buying one with bleed, either you like it as it is or expect the fact that it's not going to come out. These are some of the most typical things that I look for and see when we're inspecting Navajo weavings to make a decision. So look at condition. By Medicine Man Gallery, located for over 26 years in Tucson, Arizona, specializing in antique Native American art, early Western art, including the famed Maynard Dixon, as well as modern art. You can find everything online at medicinemangallery.com. There's over 6,000 objects to select from. Also, the Charles Bloom Murder Mystery Series, written by yours truly, me, Mark Sublett. There's six books in this series, and they follow the protagonist Charles Bloom through all the intrigue of the art world set in Santa Fe and the Navajo Nation. These can be found on Audible, eBooks, Amazon, and of course, the gallery at medicinemangallery.com.